personnel. The Nigerian leather industry has the potential to increase earnings by as much as 70% in the next couple of years. FG targets 70% foreign earning from leather industry. Policy launched. This forum must be more proactive in ensuring that the multi-billion dollar Mandela Hydropower Electric Project is fully operational. Regional peace and economic growth. Northern governors meet in Jalingo. Plus, PIB concludes journey in National Assembly. House of Representatives, OK's bill. Good evening and welcome to NTA Network News. I am Ian Ray John. Adiola Komia Kerry joins me from Lagos. Thank you for joining us. President Muhammadu Buhari has pledged to improve funding, equipment and welfare of personnel of the armed forces to effectively secure lives and property in the country. This was contained in a message to the grand finale of the 2021 Army Day celebration in Abuja. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa who was at the event, completes the story. Seven are retired officers and soldiers assembled at the annual Nigerian Army Day celebration. From a group of 18 able men, organized by John Glover in 1863 in Lagos, the Nigerian Army has transformed to a strong force, protecting Nigeria's territorial integrity. This and the sacrifice of army personnel to keep the country one during the 30 months civil war are the reasons for this annual celebration. We will continue to provide you the needed support to enhance your welfare. The Nigerian army has also made tremendous progress in areas of professionalism, administration, and cooperation among the sister services and other security agencies. Ten officers and seven soldiers received the 2021 Chief of Army Staff Commendation and Award for hard work and excellence during the event, attended by former Chief of Defense Staff and Chief of Army Staff. The 2021 Nigerian Army Day celebration marks Nigerian Army's 158 years of existence after establishment in 1863. In Abuja, Ismail Musa, NTA News. Meanwhile, the presidency has commended security agencies for enhanced collaboration in the arrest of individuals who have inflicted pain and hardship on fellow citizens. Elizabeth Omori has details of the successes recorded so far by the presidency in fishing out these individuals. Successes recorded is the arrest of the subversive leader of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, a group known for its murderous actions and virulent messages was detained as a result of cross-border cooperation. This international operation was executed in a closely coordinated fashion and they returned to Nigeria to face the law. The violence inspired by IPUB has led to hundreds of fatalities, particularly targeted at government assets and law enforcement agents. Additionally, there have been at last count 55 separate violent attacks heavily concentrated in the southeast which hipped for the hardship on honest and hard-working citizens the government had long been monitoring the activities of ipub and had strong cause to believe that the funding sources include proceeds of suspected illicit criminal activities the state security service also raided the residence of a militant ethnic secessionist who has also been conducting acts of terror and disturbing peace under the guise of protecting fellow kingsmen. Any attempt to build an armory coupled with plans either subtle or expressed to undermine our unity as a nation would not be condoned. Mr. President's directives to security services regarding anyone seen to be carrying arms particularly AK-47, are clear and require no further illumination. Assault weapons are not tools of peace-loving people and as such, regardless of whom they are and where they are from, security agencies should treat them all the same. The presidency commends the successes of our security agencies as they have demonstrated significant dexterity in carrying out these missions. This level of professionalism, the presidency says, must be sustained and brought to bear 
as we focus on extracting from our society those who have found a new trade in targeting students, rural dwellers, and citizens in the northeast. In Abuja, Elizabeth Omori, NTU News. And away from security now, Vice President Yemi Oshibajo this Tuesday launched the National Leather and Leather Products Policy Implementation Plan 2020. The policy document to be implemented gives the strategic direction necessary to drive leather industry development through new initiatives and improvement on current efforts. It is now my very special pleasure and privilege to formally launch the National Leather and Leather Products Policy in the words of Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo, the stage is set for establishing the leather and leather products industry in Nigeria on a sure footed and well thought out growth trajectory. And this is because the focus is now more on adding value to leather works and making it competitive in the international market rather than relying on imported leather products. The industry is huge and its potential can only be imagined. Mm -hmm. So there's no question that properly organized, the leather and leather products industry could become one of the major items in Nigeria's export basket. There's clearly an enormous potential for even greater job opportunities and much higher export proceeds. As we've seen, the Nigerian Economic Summit Group projection shows that the Nigerian leather industry has the potential to increase earnings by as much as 70% in the next couple of years. So this explains why this launch of the National Leather and Leather Products Policy Implementation Plan is such an exciting development. The Vice President says the country now has a real opportunity to address the specific challenges and shortcomings of the leather sector with pragmatic strategies to permanently resolve these issues for optimal productivity. And Minister of Science and Technology speaks in the same vein, describing the leather industry as a gold mine for the country. The nation needs to effectively and efficiently exploit our national resources to accelerate the pace of national development. We we'll work closely with the National Steering Committee on the Strategic Implementation Plan of the National Leather and Leather Products Policy to ensure that this policy is fully implemented. The plan covers eight thematic areas including intellectual property rights, governance, e-leather, environmental and social best practices, marketing, funding, critical infrastructure, and research and development. Uh, this policy will bring all stakeholders together from animal husbandry, the abattoir operations, hide and skins vendors, tanneries, etc. to ensure that this policy makes the desired impact. Let me leave you with a saying of the minister who says much have been done, but that which are yet to be done are enormous. From the Yaradwa Center here in Abuja, Jide Onifade. Into news. In other news, the utilization of foreign aid in Nigeria will now be monitored. This is sequel to the constitution of a national task force on the utilization of the foreign aid by the Minister of State for Budget and National Planning, Clem Agba. Correspondent Eliasu Ali Yakubu reports that the Executive Director, Africa Network for Environment and Economic Justice, Reverend David Ugolo, is the leader of the task force. The research has shown that Africa is the biggest recipient of foreign aid and development assistance to alleviate hunger, poverty, and foster economic development on the continent. Nigeria is one of the benefiting African countries. But the questions begging for answers are, what are the measurable impacts of the foreign aid to Nigerian communities after years of the foreign donations to the coalition of civil society organizations? These meetings between the civil society organizations and the Minister of State for Budget and National Planning is geared towards changing the narratives by making sure that the impact on the Nigerian community is visible lack of commitment in the use of country systems 
by development partners, especially in procurement and budgeting, and weak capacity in timely collection and the use of government statistical data, which have not only reemerged but also worsened. We believe that for Nigeria to maximize the benefit of development cooperation, it is important that the federal government develop a development cooperation strategy. The strategy should be developed through collaborative effort. The meeting further agreed to strengthen collaboration, especially now that a national task force has been constituted to monitor and report back to the ministry for proper evaluation. In Abuja, Iliasu Aliaku, NTA News. And on par, the Northeast Governors Forum has called on the federal government to commence operation on the multi billion Nair Mambila hydropower project to propel rapid development of the region. This is at the ongoing Northeast Governors Forum meeting in Jalingo. Correspondent Joseph Zana Gambo completes the report. This Governors Forum, which comprises of Meduguri, Yobe, Gombe, Bauchi, Adamao and Taraba State has established itself as a powerful regional voice in Nigerian political arena. The fifth meeting of the North East Governors Forum, holding in Jalangu, the Taraba State capital, is to address issues bordering on nationwide epileptic power supply and the need for the commencement of operations of the multi billion dollar Mambila Hydro Power Project, as well as security challenges bedeviling states in the region. This forum must be more proactive in ensuring that the multi-billion dollar Mambila Hydropower Electric Project is fully operational. Humanitarian crisis occasioned by insurgency in the Northeast, challenges posed by continued headers farmer crisis, which has adversely affected farming activities and the call for the removal of exploration and exploitation of mineral resources from the exclusive list to the concurrent list are among issues to be deliberated upon by the Northeast governors. The involvement of the communities will facilitate better understanding, cooperation and provision of local intelligence for the success of the security operations. Our military should capitalize on the conflict and division within the ranks of insurgents and intensify the war against them with a view to ensuring that defeat. A communique is expected at the end of the meeting in Jalingo. Joseph Zanagambo, NTA News. Elsewhere, Borno State Governor Professor Babagana Omar Zulum has visited Niger Republic on the invitation of President Bazoum Mohamedou for a closed door meeting with focus on repatriation of Nigerian refugees from Borno State who fled communities in different parts of northern Borno since 2014 over attacks by Boko Haram terrorists. Mohamed Goni reports. Of Niger Republic. Hosted Borno State Governor, Professor Abagana Omar Azlam, alongside Governor of Difa Region, Issa Lemin, Senator Abubakar Kiari, and Speaker Borno State House of Assembly, Abdul Karim Lan, to a closed door meeting in Difa Town. A number of communities in northern Borno share land borders with Niger Republic, which is why government and citizens of both countries have been collaborating on security and management of refugees. Governor Azlam, who spoke to journalists shortly after the meeting, described the session as fruitful as a number of decisions were taken on repatriation of Borno citizens. Uh, people have developed resilience within the last six years, and then they are now looking forward to see how they will return to their respective communities. Having seen a reasonable degree of progress made by the government of Nigeria and the government of Niger as regards the security situation in the two countries. Governor Wagana Omar Azlim also visited Malampatori headquarters of Abadam local government area for reconstruction and safe return of the refugees. Professor Abagana Omar Azlam, who held interactive meeting with the commanding officer of the 68th Battalion in Malampatori to identify areas Borno State government could offer support, also approved 10 patrol vehicles to enhance security surveillance of the area. The governor equally directed the State Rural Water Supply Agency to drill deep aquifer borehole within the military barracks and commended the troops for their commitment. In Maiduguri, Mahmoud Goni, NTA News. The unlawful arrest and maltreatment of Nigerians in any part of the world is totally unacceptable and will no longer be treated with kid gloves. This warning is coming from the Senate as it considered a motion on alleged unlawful encroachment into Nigerian borders and arrest of Nigerians by officers of Benin Republic. It was the first plenary of the week and the only matter of urgent public importance 
was on the imminent danger to Nigeria Benin Republic relations. It came from Senator Tolu Debiye, who drew the attention of the Senate to alleged unlawful encroachment into Nigerian borders and arrest of Nigerians by officials and government of Benin Republic. Note that the arrest of these Nigerians is based on the allegations that they are resisting encroachment into Nigerian land through Ibokobi village in the Yewa North local government area of Ogun State. Direct the committees on foreign affairs, justice and state and local governments to urgently engage with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Federal Ministry of Justice and the National Border Commission to investigate the incident. The Donkey Slaughter Regulation and Establishment of Breeding and Ranching Bill, sponsored by Senate Leader Yahya Abdullahi, and the Nigerian Port Authority Act Repeal and Reenactment Bill by Senator Danjuma Goje passed second reading. We should have the restocking of the national donkey herd, eventually increasing the donkey population and eliminating the threats of its extinction. This bill is also aimed at promoting efficiency, productivity, and quality of services as well as to bring in competitiveness. Part of the Committee on Appropriations. Senate has received the report of its Committee on Appropriations on the 2021 supplementary budget for consideration at its next sitting on Wednesday. From the National Assembly, Ignatius Nkwo, NT News. Meanwhile, our correspondents visited the Ibukufi community, where, which shares border with the Republic of Benin and brings in this report. Igbo Kofi, a border town with the Republic of Bene, having about 15 villages, nine polling units, and produced two councillors under Ward 10 Yewa North local government. For some time now, cases of alleged molestation, intimidation, and arrests of the residents are being reported against Beninois gendarmes. 51-year-old Matthew Ajose, a plank seller, lost his sight when he was allegedly attacked by the gendarmes on Nigerian soil. I accuse French police that how come you are collecting fares on Nigerian roads? On getting down from my vehicle, I was met with tear gas, which left me this way, blind. Also accused the Republic of encroachment by removing the last standing pillar, number 78, erected at Ibishi Road, thereby gaining unrestricted access into the Nigerian territories. We don't have somebody to fight for us, Papa. It was Opa Road, but our fathers agreed with them before they moved to a church close to Omilinde. After a while, they extended it to Ashaga and rejected it. The only boundary project by the Nigerian government for demarcation is domiciled far away from the Nigerian border, giving room for the encroachment, especially the takeover of Igbo Kofi Market and Abujupa community. But today, as I'm talking to you, the Benin Republic is claiming that, that market as part of theirs. They clear the road and they are claiming it, that it, it belongs to them. And why are they doing this? Ibokov is blessed with three good mineral resources, lime, crude oil, and gold. The implication of this encroachment is that smugglers from Benin Republic are allegedly taking advantage of about 26 illegal routes in Igbo coffee to bring into the country illegal items and contrabands unchecked by security agents. Efforts to speak with the Nigerian ambassador to Benin Republic and other authorities was unsuccessful. Time for this break now. Please stay with us. You won't go shake your body. This daddy make you come now. He the farm say he's happy. You want to grow six parts in a day. I beg you not to pass me your power. You want to show yourself. Oh. size find it with the new etel data plans dial star 141 hash now to get the plan that suits you
Airtel, the smartphone network. The National Pension Commission, PENCOM, is pleased to inform all its stakeholders, particularly retirees, of Treasury-funded federal ministries, departments, and agencies, MDAs, that His Excellency, President Muhammadu Buhari, GCFR, has approved payment of some outstanding pension liabilities of the federal government under the Contributory Pension Scheme. Specifically, the President has approved payment of outstanding accrued pension rights for verified and enrolled retirees of Treasury-funded MDAs that are yet to be paid their retirement benefits, as well as the backlog of death benefit claims due to beneficiaries of deceased employees of Treasury-funded MDAs. Payment of 2.5% differential in the rate of employer pension contribution for federal government retirees and employees, which resulted from the increase in the minimum pension contribution for employers from 7.5% to 10% payment would take effect from July 2014. The Board and Management of PENCOM appreciates His Excellency, Mr. President. Announcer, the Board and Management of National Pension Commission, PENCOM. Beat sensitivity pain fast with Sensodyne Rapid Action Toothpaste. Sensodyne Rapid Action Toothpaste, available in a big 100 gram tube and a small 25 gram tube. Dear compatriots, our country can be as great as we want. Let us all commit ourselves to its greatness. We must be willing to set aside our differences, unite and stay as one. In our expansive landmass, human and material resources, and plurality lies our strength. Let our challenges lead us to rediscover our common ground, and together, let's find solutions. This will take some time, so it requires patience, tolerance, and forgiveness from every one of us. Let all hands come on deck to protect and transform our country. Let us unite and see each other, not as adversaries, but as brothers and sisters. Together, we can build a better Nigeria for ourselves and for the next generations. This message is brought to you by the National Orientation Agency, NOA, with support from Nigerian Television Authority, NTA. <laughs> Thank you for staying. The House of Representatives has passed the Petroleum Industry and Governance Bill during plenary Tuesday. The clause-by-clause clause consideration of the 318-section document was last Thursday done in the Green Chamber, culminating in its adoption. A conference committee has been set up by the House for harmonization, in particular the section proposing 5% for host communities, which the Senate pegged at 3%. Chairman of the House Special Committee on PIB, Mohamed Tahir Morganu, enumerated other provisions for the Niger Delta region in view of the impact of oil and gas activities on the environment and livelihoods of the people. Under the PIB, they are going to benefit from 5% that we propose for host communities. They are equally benefiting from 30% of profit oil that we are proposed for frontier exploration that will also be deployed for the purpose of uh, remediation. 13% remediation fund goes to the Niger Delta. The, the, we have the Niger Delta Ministry. We have the Niger Delta Development Commission. We have the Amnesty Program. All these are geared towards the development of the Niger Delta. These, he said, are in addition to water benefits as captured in the national budget. Meanwhile, OPEC Secretary General Mohamed Sanusi Barakindo has applauded the passage of the Petroleum Industry Bill, PIB, as this will attract foreign investment. This was at the Nigeria Oil and Gas Strategic Conference, where the OPEC Secretary General joined virtually. Lydia Sampson has more. OPEC Secretary General said in its 20 years, the Nigerian Oil and Gas Conference and Exhibition has risen to become one of Nigeria's and indeed Africa's largest and most prominent industry events. Burkindo reiterated that the unpredictability and volatility brought on by the coronavirus pandemic has intensified discussions related to climate change and the energy transition. Environmental lobbies and even some corporate boards are pressurizing oil companies and governments to pursue radical policies and initiatives that could, in the end, be more disruptive than productive for the global energy industry. 
There have recently even been calls for investments in the oil and gas sectors to be discontinued, which is a dangerous and unrealistic scenario. This golden anniversary of Nigeria's OPEC partnership is commemorated with a special edition of OPEC Bulletin, which provides a splendid walk down memory lane from July of 1971, when Nigeria joined OPEC. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. In other news, the Oba of Ajase Ikbo, Oba Ismail Alebiosu, has appealed to the federal government to make its impact felt in his domain. The Oba made the request when Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed paid him a visit. Anthony Oba Forsen, Ismail Alebiosu, who was appointed recently by the Kwara State government, told the minister that his area has a huge investment potential. With the necessary infrastructures in place, it will engage youths in the area to become productive. I want to particularly mention that uh, uh, our youth uh, want to appeal through your office to the federal government for youth empowerment. We have upcoming ones that are vibrant graduates that are ready to work. The Information and Culture Minister congratulated the Oba on his accession to the throne and prayed the Almighty to grant him wisdom during his reign. He equally assured that the Oba's request will be taken to the Council for consideration. Born in 1980, the 41-year-old monarch is a law graduate from the University of Ilori and member of the United Kingdom Chamber of Arbitrators. He succeeded Oba Sikiratanda, who died in February this year. Anthony Forson, NTA News. Contrary to the government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa has described the delivery of the 1.5 megawatt solar power project at the Ministry of Works and Housing as a clear demonstration of Nigeria's work to meeting her energy needs in a renewable manner. This was at the inauguration of the solar power project on behalf of President Muhammadu Buhari. Abdullahi Mohammed reports. A stone hitting two birds, parking space and the host to the solar panels. The end product, a solution to the shortage in energy needs of headquarters of two critical ministries. This, for the federal government, is working the talks of the Paris Agreement. This 1.52 megawatt solar farm, which I'm told is the largest solar project for a public building in Africa, will enable us to reduce carbon emissions. Climate action is a $3 trillion investment opportunity in Africa by 2030. And let me underscore here, an investment opportunity in Africa. The project will see to the reduction of the average diesel consumption from 776,248 litres per annum to 166,825 litres per annum. And it will save the government over 270 million naira throughout life cycle. Nigeria has set for itself an ambitious target of increasing access to electricity to 90% by the year 2030, with at least 10% of these derived from clean energy. In the nooks and crannies of this country, renewable energy projects like this ones are being delivered. And Nigeria is gradually realizing its energy needs. And guess what? In a cleaner manner. In Abuja, Abdullah Mohammed, NT News. And on health, government will continue to educate and provide correct information for Nigerians to take informed decision on COVID-19 vaccines. The executive director of National Primary Health Care Development Agency, Dr. Faisal Shaib, who said this in Abuja, advised Nigerians to ignore propaganda on the social media on the negative effects of the vaccines on humans. UNICEF representative Dr. Ganga Gapta noted that it has become necessary to counter these false theories if Nigeria must overcome this pandemic. Seen, there have been concerted efforts on social media to create doubts and create misinformation about COVID vaccination. And it's important that the media, which has played such a critical role in the last three months for the success of the COVID vaccine rollout, takes up this challenge to replace the false information by the correct information. 
Today, as we can see, nearly 4 million doses of the vaccines have been administered in Nigeria. We have not recorded any single case of death linked directly to the vaccination. Dr. Faisal said Nigeria has made judicious use of about 4 million doses of vaccine received, noting that the country has so far dispensed about 3.9 million doses, representing about 96% of the vaccines received. A demonstration to counter social media propaganda showing that the vaccine contains chips and magnetic substance was carried out. Now, the National Heart Commission has reassured Nigerian pilgrims of sustained efforts in addressing issues arising from the 2021 aborted Hajj operations owing to the COVID-19 new normal realities. This was during a high-level engagement with media units of state Hajj boards across the country as measures to avoid a window for misinformation. Abu Bakr Usman Akwanga reports. Anda, the 2020 and 2021 failed meets to perform the annual Hajj operations in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is necessitating this conference to equip media personnel of Hajj boards nationwide with how best to respond to any query the public might wish to know on the budget exercises. The prevalence of COVID-19 and the challenge it poses to Hajj exercise is crucial to this gathering as pilgrims funds management under the Hajj savings scheme and other burning issues require credible information management. It is the uh, right of the pilgrims once, once they are willing to get their money to get it back. We already have um, agreed on this and we also, of course, we are... Uh, getting feedback that this has started. National Hajj Commission of Nigeria says the current ground rule for the performance of Hajj operations needs to be reviewed while efforts to sustain the current tempo in tackling COVID-19 remains critical. The information managers here are expected to enlighten pilgrims in their various states on the post activities of the 2021 Hajj exercise in the wake of the global pandemic. In Abuja, Abubakar Usman Akwanga, NT News. Everyone has a responsibility on how to restore the lost glory of Nigeria. This, the Nigerian Television Authority says, it will continue to create contents that will make Nigerians ponder on unity and togetherness in the country. Abdul Malik Hassan reports that the Director General of the NTA, Yakubu, Ibn Mohammed made the pledge when he received the leadership of Nigeria Institutes of Public Relations on a courtesy visit. In the visit by the Nigeria Institute of Public Relations on the NTA is to further solicit partnership that will aid in resolving contemporary challenging issues in Nigeria with a view to addressing them and ensure national integration. The most important thing is how do we come together, harness those endowments for the benefit of the whole. This is what we need to do. Director General of the NTA, Yakubu Ibn Muhammad says, NTA will continue to work with the NIPR with the view to reposition the institute for the greater good. This country have been, have been uh, emphasizing our fault lines instead of leveraging on our diversities, you know, for the growth and development of this country. And for too long, we in this country, especially in the most recent past, we've been talking to each other instead of talking with each other. I think we should, we should get a platform yeah, by Nigerians from all parts of this country, and Nigerians of all shades of opinion, you know, can sit down on a table and speak with each other. Elsewhere, ICT engineers and NTA are making a great deal for effective partnership on to capacity development. The Institute will be organizing conferences, workshops and seminars, among others, which we will very much appreciate the sponsorship of our members within the NTA. Today, Korean Engineering Assembly is coming up next month. NTA is sponsoring 123 engineering personnel. That is the 
blessings and support we all have from the management of NTA. The largest television network in Africa, NTA, is adequately committed in utilizing ICT skills in broadcasting in Abuja. Abdul Malik Hassan, NTA News. And in Kwara, the state will soon be the center of health care in the north central zone when the oncology and diagnostic center is fully operational. This gesture is one of the laudable initiatives of Boa Group to improve health care delivery in the country and to discourage medical tourism. Olajide Belu has to report. Boa earmarks $100 million every year towards education, health, and social development. The 2.5 billion naira oncology and diagnostic center to be constructed in 12 months in Kwan State is one of such initiatives to provide world-class health facilities in Nigeria and West Africa. We all know the issues that we have with cancer. We all know the limitations that the country has. You know, Professor has mentioned we have very few, you know, cancer centers and you know, I had the professor mention that this one that is going to be built and started in the Lorraine Quarry State will be the largest probably in West Africa. It is a standalone. It's purely dedicated to oncology diagnosis and treatment. And if, you know, it's going to be one of the largest or the largest, you know, as I had to say, you know, this would surely go a long way in relieving a lot of pains, you know, and sufferings of our people. Since health, they say, is wealth, Boa says it places premium on peculiar diseases that usually requires medical tourism and ensures it becomes a thing of the past. In the initiative, Governor Abdurrahman Abdurazak says the center, when completed, will not only create job opportunities, improve the internally generated revenue for the state, it will also attract experts and research that will be conducted for enhanced service delivery. This is a legacy project that will last beyond all of us and for years to come this would be a priority project which um, we anchor uh, which will anchor our healthcare system now i trust our people will be up to the task and managing the facilities the proposed site of the oncology and diagnostic center was suspected by the boer group in company of governor abdurrahman abdurazak as work is expected to commence in august 2021 on large day Bello. NTA News. Now, President Muhammad Buhari has joined the entertainment industry in celebrating a renowned actor, writer, and movie producer, Richard Mufe Damijo, RMD, on his 60th birthday. The president congratulated the veteran actor, who is also a lawyer, on his many achievements in the entertainment industry, winning national and international awards that brought glory to the local film industry and placed the country on global limelight. The president noted the contributions of RMD in the field of community and development communications, culture, tourism and journalism, working in the public service as a former commissioner of culture and tourism, preceded by serving as special advisor on culture and tourism in Delta State. Now time to join Adiola in Lagos for more. Adiola, it's over to you. Thank you, Iere. Lagos State House of Assembly has passed an amended version of a criminal justice law which bars the police from parading suspects before the media. The criminal justice bill was passed at a sit-in presided over by the Deputy Speaker Wasiwe Shilokun Sani in Lagos. Musa Toliat reports. 29A of the newly passed bill states that from the commencement of the law, the police shall refrain from parading any suspect before the media. The bill further stipulates that a person must be reasonably suspected to engage in unlawful possession of firearms or other dangerous instruments before a policeman can arrest without a warrant. A subsection of the bill also barred the police or any other security agency from arresting a person in place of anyone suspected in a criminal matter. Part of the provisions of the bill is that a person who is arrested shall be given reasonable facilities for obtaining legal advice, bail, or to make arrangements for defense or release. The bill emphasizes that suspects must be accorded humane treatment with the right to dignity of person, not to be subjected to any form of torture, cruel, inhumane, or degrading treatment. That a bill for a law to amend the Administration of Criminal Justice Law, Chapter 3, Laws of Lagos State, 
be passed into law. All those in favor say, all those who are against say, nay. They deserve it. Deputy Speaker directed the acting clerk of the House to transmit the bill to Governor Babajide Sawolu for his assent. There will be crime diary, crime record in the state where crime register, where suspects for whatever offense are recorded. The lawmakers expedited action on the bill to re echo the stance of the state government on enhanced human rights records in Lagos. Musa Toliad, NTA News. Now, apart from deepening reforms that can encourage human capital development and fill the critical gap between research and industries in the country, Nigeria must also work towards building a knowledge-based economy that will enable small and medium enterprises to leverage digital channels. Central Bank Governor Godwin Mefiele advanced this position while delivering the 51st Convocation Lecture of the University of Lagos. Adeni Yitaiwo completes the report. Since he assumed office as the governor of the country's Apex Bank, Godwin Emefili has, on behalf of the federal government, pushed many monetary and economic reforms, many of them targeted at providing the right environment for small and medium-scale enterprises to grow. The policy direction and numerous intervention programs of the bank are well captured in the lecture titled National Development and Knowledge Economy in the Digital Age, Leapfrogging SMEs into the 21st Century. One of the most recent schemes targeted at channeling low-interest wholesale funds to the micro, small and medium enterprise segment is the Small and Medium Enterprise Development Fund. This scheme, which charges 9% per annum interest rate, has recorded the disbursement of over 83.9 billion naira to 216,704 beneficiaries at the end of 2020. To bridge existing gap between research institutions and industry, the CBN governor called on tertiary institutions to come forward with ideas with a promise to support research efforts. Closing from this lecture today, we will be writing to all the universities to begin to conduct some kind of entrepreneurship development competition program amongst their students. While emphasizing the need for functional education that can equip youth with requisite skills, the general overseer of Citadel Global Community Church, Pastor Tunde Bakari, who chaired the lecture, noting that the future belongs to entrepreneurs. It's high time our higher institutions started churning our graduates whose theses are convertible to viable business plans. We are aware that there is a need to empower our youth if we are serious about moving the economy of this nation forward. Already, about 29,026 SMEs have benefited from CBN disbursement to the tune of 111.7 billion naira. In Lagos, Adini Itaewo, NTA News. The network news will continue after this break. Please stay with us. Free, isn't it? Putting yourself out there. Ignoring the voices telling you you can't. Will you step aside or will you go for it? After all, what's the worst that could happen? So keep trying. Don't stop. Believe in yourself and go for it. Aladana, available in many variants to nourish you every step of the way. Mommy is ready to receive me a bundle of joy. Mommy is making my home cleaner and safer. We are Dettol, Dettol. Illnesses can happen at home too. That's why Dettol and me together will make my baby's home safe and to protect from up to 100 illness causing germs. That's why moms want to be Dettol. Dettol Shaw. Sure. We are Dettol, Dettol Shaw.
glad to have you back. And away from the usual now, we hear that private individuals are now funding startups. Let's hear more uh, from Benny on Business News. Thank you, Yeri, and welcome to business. We start by telling you that the Minister of Trade, the Minister, the Minister of Trade and Industry, Trade and Investment is collaborating with Niki Okoye organization. They've launched an exercise to mobilize capital in country to support Nigerian startup firms. The project under the African Enterprise Initiative seeks to also connect Nigerian firms with opportunities outside the country. Nigeria has the potential to be very rich if necessary reforms are carried out and to this end, government is working with partners to ensure closure of loopholes. Bosede Abel reports that the 12th National Steering Committee of the Open Government Partnership, OGP, is focused on strengthening relationships, communication and partnership towards the implementation of the second national action plan. There's been a lot of uh, progress, especially in terms of uh, engagement of uh, citizens, uh, either in the open uh, procurement uh, area or also in the open budgeting uh, area. Co-creation happens when the two actors are working together to move those pieces um, forward. Market investors gain 103.23 billion naira as NGX Old Share Index maintains positive posture, inches up further by 0.52%. Equities close at 38,418.04 basis points as again 0.02% appreciation recorded previously. Market breadth closed positive as Maybaker led 29 gainers as against 10 losers, topped by Etana at the end of today's session. Market turnover closed positive as Fidelity Bank, FBNH and UBA were the most active to boost market turnover over. That is business news. Here is over to you. Thank you, Benny, for the update. Now, the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Issa Ali Pantami, has pledged the full support of the Ministry and the Power Statehouse under its purview towards digitizing the performance of United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO. He made a pledge during a cutsy call on him by the permanent delegate of Nigeria to UNESCO, Hajo Sani, in his office. The minister, while felicitating with Hajo Sani on her appointment, noted that the programs and initiatives of UNESCO are in alignment with that of the sector, emphasizing ICT as pivotal in achieving the desired goals. Uh, all about yes. digital yes. economy, yes. digital yes. technology, yes. digitalization, yes. and this yes. is the world today. Yes. Uh, I have been saying that today, digital sector is not just an independent sector, mm -hmm. like education or agri, mm -hmm. it is the key enabler of other sectors. Okay. You use it as the key to open other sectors. So as a lead a UN agency yes. in the area of education, yeah. we adhere to the belief that information and communication technology can com I mean, complement and enrich, transform education for the better. Yes, yes. Uh, there's another in initiative again, which is directly under your ministry, the Internet Universality Indicators. Okay. The concept of this is emphasizes the UNESCO updated position in the digital age. The newly forged partnership between the two organizations is expected to ensure that strategic engagements between both parties are deliberate and impactful, especially in facilitating the active involvement of UNESCO and the Nigeria digital economy sector for the benefit of the country. The Nigerian ambassador to Burkina Faso, Misitura Abdurrahim, has presented letter of credence to President Roche Kabore of Burkina Faso. This was during a special ceremony held at the presidential villa in Kosiam. The ambassador conveyed the warm greetings of President Buhari and the Nigerian people of to President Kabori and the people of Burkina Faso. The Nigerian ambassador noted that Nigeria and Burkina Faso have been enjoying excellent bilateral relations over the years and share similar way of life and cultural values. The 
Federal Road Safety Commission has approved the promotion of 284 personnel, including assistant and deputy corps commanders. In the same vein, punitive actions were taken against erring officers, amongst which two were dismissed. Appointments of two terminated. One was awarded reduction in rank. Three suffered loss of seniority and one was awarded severe reprimand. The punitive actions given were as a result of varying offences committed in service. It's now time for sports with, uh, just before the break, let's, just before sports, let's have the break. Politics and internal democracy in Nigeria. That's our focus on NTA Tuesday Live this week. Tuesday Live, every Tuesday at 10.30 p.m. It promises to be incisive and educative. Don't miss it. Welcome back. Let's now have Buddy tell us more on sports. Many thanks, Yare. Welcome to sports. I'm Buddy Adelaide, Minister of Youth and Sports Development. Sunday Diary has expressed confidence in Nigerian athletes to deliver medals for the country at the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Dari was speaking at the sent forth ceremony for the first batch of Team Nigeria contingent to the Games in Abuja Tuesday morning. Sometime next week, Mr. President will formally receive the second batch before they take off, unveil the official Team Nigeria uniform for the Games, and we expect that Mr. President will officially hand over the Nigerian contingent to the NOC President. The laws of football are ever dynamic, hence the need to always be up to date in its application, especially by match officials. This is why the Nigeria Football Federation and Nigeria Referees Association have organized a training course for referees from all parts of the country in Abuja. We really need to come back and talk to our referees, teach them about, you know, the whole new procedure of doing things, particularly with reference to handball situation and offside. This type of this uh, exercise has never happened. For the first 32 or 31 years. So it is really, it is really fantastic. Away to Euro 2020, where the first finalists will be emerging this evening as Italy and Spain are currently facing off at Wembley Stadium with the scores 1 0. After a goalless first half, Federico Chiesa gave Italy the lead in the 60th minute before Alvaro Morata equalized for Spain 20 minutes later. At the end of 90 minutes, 1 0, and they are headed for extra time. Meanwhile, Wembley Stadium will also host the highly anticipated semi-final between England and Denmark on Wednesday. The three Lions will be brimming with confidence following their final success against Ukraine, while their opponents have had an emotional journey towards success. And back home, ahead of the 2020 Africa Mini Football Cup of Nations, which kicks off on Thursday at the largest sports resort in Ibadan, the national teams of Libya and Egypt are already in the country, with others being expected. Tunisia already pulled out of the tournament. And that does it on sports. It's back to your area. Well, thanks, buddy. President Mamadou Buhari sends heartfelt condolence to the Ike Imokwede family on the loss of their matriarch, Pastor Emily O'Hare, Ike Imokwede, aged 79. The president prays God's comfort for the widower, Mr. Frank Ike Imokwede, and the entire family, asking them to take solace in the fact that the departed 
spent the latter part of her years in deep commitment to the evangelical ministry and also bringing succor to the vulnerable and underprivileged. He praises her contributions in the secular realm too, seven variously as curator of National Museum, President, National Council of Women Societies, and as Honorable Secretary of State, Federal Minister for States and Local Governments in 1993. And that uh, is Network News tonight. Many thanks for being part of it. And please remember, the fight against rape and rapist is on. Be a part of it. Good night.